Hi there, I'm Elias Sipka, and this is the Patrick's Review. Originally I was going to, by the way, I was going to do a few Doctor Who episodes at the end of this year, but unfortunately I won't be able to do those in time, so I'll do that next year. Just to let you know. Anyway. Now, in this episode we continue on with the Rocky Journey Space Ranger series, and we're, here we're looking at the third one in the Dozen Satellites called The Gypsy Moon. This was actually an edit of three episodes called Rocky's Odyssey. Now, it was released in 1956 and was directed by Hollingsworth Morse, written by Warren Wilson and produced by Roland D. Reed. The cast includes Richard Crane, Sky Beckett, Sally Mansfield, Robert Lydon, Maurice Cass, Charles Meredith, Erika Norden, John Banner, yep, John Banner, Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes is in this, David Bond and Patsy Parsons, and Harry Lauter. Now, like, a, uh, like the rest of the Rocky and Jones Space Ranger topic readers, the Gypsy Moon is in the public domain and can be found on old VHS tapes, various public domain operated DVDs, internet streaming sites, and on YouTube. My review print is from my archive copy that I extracted from the Sci Fi Invasion 50 film box set from Mill Creek. Quality is decent for the nature of the print, but I suspect that uh, this was a VHS rip, not that it matters too much. Now for the synopsis. While patrolling space, the orbit jet encounters two wandering moons connected by an atmosphere chain. Getting closer, they're buzzed by an alien aircraft. Immediately, Rocky Jones steers the ship into space to avoid being hit, but eventually, curiosity gets the better of him and he decides to land on one of the moons to investigate. Rocky then finds himself in the middle of an ancient cold war between the inhabitants of the two moons, Posito and Nagato. Meanwhile, officious Queen Cleolanta takes advantage of Rocky's absence to lure Space Secretary Drake to a neutral meeting ground by using edited recordings of Rocky's voice so he can, she can trick the United Worlds into giving up valuable territory to officials. This is the third of the dozen or so topic re edits of the old 1954 science fiction TV serial Rocky Giant Space Ranger. This was shown on television screens in 1956, two years after the single season show at uh, Rise Course. This feature re was edited together from a triple power serial originally titled Rocky's Odyssey. While I find the idea of two planetoids roaming through space with an atmosphere chain, connecting them together somewhat scientifically dubious. In order to have an atmosphere sufficiently thick enough for its inhabitants to breathe safely, the planetoid has to have enough of a mass to attain and attain a rotationary force significant enough to allow the atmosphere to stay with it without losing it to the vacuum of space. And um, look, the reason why like our planet Earth has its atmosphere is because Earth is rotating as it's uh, spinning through space and it's large enough to to allow the to for its mass to act as like an atmosphere magnet. There are a few other forces involved with that, but that's just pretty much the, just the, the lowest the layman terms I can think of. So basically, the reason why we have an atmosphere is because Earth is big enough, and it's spinning fast enough to allow that. Also the same with gravity. Not only that, but while it is possible for two planetoids of equal size to theoretically share such an atmosphere, the resulting gravitational forces involved would not allow the planetoids to safely sustain any life of them has the chances one of the planetoids breaking free from the orbital shared custody, custody arrangement is too significant a threat. The story is has written is still robust enough to sustain the suspension of disbelief of the average viewer. The Gypsy Moon also has a good example of how to peacefully solve a seriously all antagonistic relationship between te two technologically advanced tribes. I'm not calling these two groups races or civilizations, as they are of the same race, and are also are the remnants of an ancient civilization which was almost completely destroyed when they attempted to go beyond the means of weaponized lightning, forever changing the people's lives. So originally those two planets was actually part of a planet that pretty much blew apart when the when its inhabitants tried to use lightning to as a weapon. And and they accomplished this by literally using the lessons of the past to come up with ingenious solutions without using over violence. Rocky takes a much needed advice from ten year old cadet Ranger Bobby, who uses the book of poetry he's tasked with reading as a homework assignment. Yes, kids. Even in the far distant future, you cannot escape homework, no matter how far deep in the space you go. And the book he's reading is Homer's classic the Odyssey. No, not Homer Simpson, like the classic uh, poet Homer. And by the way, the Odyssey was actually, um, in case you're wondering, it's actually about, uh, it's part of, it's part of uh, Homer's uh, catalogue of stories along with the Iliad, where pretty much were tasked about, uh, about heroes uh, fighting the Trojan War, pretty much. Now, according to Bobby, I mean, the, uh, he used the Odyssey to pretty much devise a space version of the Trojan horse to sneak into enemy territory and to overpower the first peacefully. So they used the Orbiter as a Trojan horse. 
And by the way, go dig those spaceship recliner chairs. <laughs> now there is also a B-plot with our old villainous Cleolanta up to her old tricks. This time using a synthetic version of Rocky's voice to fool Space Secretary Drake into giving up valuable territory to officious. Luckily for our heroes, Rocky happens to get within radio range after selling the score of the two moons to hear the bogus message and use his knowledge to his advantage. The Gypsy Men also had quite a bit of work done on the visual effects front. From the early, very early use of matte compositing, compositing, where two different shots combined to get usually a background image used to convey a vast landscape, an old optical trick that was still being perfected around that, that time, but now so commonplace of a current tech, it's literally a child's play. You know, basically when um, we see uh, reporters and stuff on the news, and they have that, uh, that screen behind them, usually that's uh, like a matte compositing using uh, computers. Of course, nowadays any, any kid can do that on their computer. <laughs> now to the various effects used. The screeching electronic ear rot that is used for the Nazi Nagato music sounds like an old dial-up moment being executed in the electric chair. There was also a before Star Trek did it moment, where during a punch-up aboard the orbit jet, a helpless guard falls backwards towards the automatic doors, and the doors open up to let fall through. Twice. It was ten years before Star Trek had this happen to them only once. Now, another solid example of 1950 science fiction with plenty of important life lessons to be taught to the kids watching the TV on in the family living room back home. If you're a science fiction lover and want something safe and completely groomer free to show the kids, this will do the job nicely. I'll get your kids to, to read the Odyssey, it'll teach you quite a bit as well. Now, the Gypsy Moon has earned a B, 6 out of 10 from me. It's solid efforts, a typical of Rocky Jones Space Ranger. There is absolutely no gore in the routine this feature. So that's it for Rocky Jones Space Ranger the Gypsy Moon. Gets a B, 6 out of 10. It's solid. Okay. If you have any questions about films or DVDs, just hit me up in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer. Hope you guys are staying safe. Take it easy. And that's it for this, that's it for this review. See ya.